Welcome to the first ever 706 Live. All right, thank you all for tuning in to the first ever 706 live stream. My special guest host tonight is my beautiful wife, Whitney, once again. Um, if you are watching this and it is April 30th at 530, then you are actually watching this live. And if that happens to be you, we want to ask you to take a second, uh, share the video with your friends and family. We've got a lot of cool guests that are on this episode and... Uh, it's going to be a good time, and we think you're really going to enjoy it. So while you're doing that, while you're hitting the share button, you're sharing the video, we also wanted to let you know that if you want to ask questions uh, during the broadcast, feel free to drop a comment down below. Um, if we can get to them, we will. We're going to try to keep this broadcast under you know some, some decent guidelines and time restrictions. So as long as we have time to get to them, we will. And uh, feel free to ask a question. And Hopefully, we'll have time to answer them. All right, so here we are. It is April. Actually, it's the last day of April, and it has been a very different month. It's Everything is different. It's not been anything that any of us have ever gone through before. Um, and with that being said, we have seen a lot of really weird stuff. You know, We've seen people giving themselves haircuts. Like us today. We actually did that today. I made Whitney cry. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've seen people um, taking coffee and turning it into this whipped mush and then putting it on top of other drinks. And we've actually done that. And it's actually, delicious. is it's really good. Yeah. Um, Whitney has a new trend where she brings the groceries in and she takes out Lysol wipes and she wipes them down uh, before anybody's allowed to touch them. Mm. And then here in Dalton, we've seen some really weird things. Uh, we've seen things like a grown man running around downtown in a wrestling singlet screaming about strawberries. So, so it's, gotten, it's gotten a little weird. We love you, Casey. And we love your blueberry bushes. All right, so with all the weird things going on, we've seen even more people in businesses stepping up during this crisis. Um, we've seen businesses and individuals making masks and hand sanitizers for healthcare workers and those that are most, most vulnerable. Um, we've seen essential workers really step up and keep our world turning. We have our mail being delivered. We have groceries on the shelves. We have our garbage being picked up. So we, we really appreciate all that. We've also seen our churches and our nonprofits. They've begun to fill in the gaps in our community where um, we may have food insecurities. Our nonprofits and our churches are really, really stepping up. Um, and we've also seen a lot of people um, come up with some creative ways to keep up morale during this time. We have. And with that being said, that's going to lead us right into our first guest. Our first guest is Katie Walker. She happens to be the admin for the North Georgia COVID-19 Rainbow Hunt Group. Mm -hmm. Katie, how's it going? Good. How are you? We're doing good. So why don't you tell us what this uh, this Facebook group is all about? Um. So. It kind of happened by accident. Um, so my mom sent me a message talking about, and it like explained the idea of the rainbow hunt. And I was like, oh, that's cute. Didn't do anything with it. And then we have the neighborhood app. Um, and so I got on there and I was like, well, why don't I put it on there? And then my girls and I can at least walk around and maybe it'll like catch on. And um, so I put it on there and then Beth um, Looper was like, why don't we put it, make a Facebook page? And I was like, oh, sure. Um, so I did that and then it kind of blew up from there. Very cool. Um, well, you kind of answered my second question. So um, <laughs> have you seen, <laughs> have you seen this group, you know, bring families together and community closer? Are, you, are there any stories um, that you can share with us? Um, not necessarily specific stories. I've seen families get on there and say, Hey, we're going to go drive around the community. Um, tell us where your rainbows are. Um, I've seen a lot of that. So parents getting out with their kids to do stuff. Um, we've done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people have put, um, started putting rainbows that they've seen around town, like 
natural rainbows um, and just talking about kind of encouragement. So that's been really cool. I had people in Murray County and Gordon County reach out and say, hey, can we make our own page or can you include us? Because it started as Dalton. And then, and I was like, well, sure, we'll just make it as big as we want to. What is the, uh, what's the number on the page? You know what the number is up to now? The number of- Yeah, I think it's over 3,000. That's oh, really wow. cool. wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Really cool, we, uh, I, Whitney invited me to the page. And, and I invited like 900 people. <laughs> and the next yeah. day, like my newsfeed was just filled with like pictures of chalk rainbows and real rainbows and interesting, cool ways of people, you know, making rainbows. So it's really cool. And, you know, rainbows are symbolic anyways of, of a hope yeah. and, and a good future. So Promise. it's been really Well, it's great that you showed that picture because originally I had reached out to some of the, um, restaurants that I knew, like that I know the owners. And I was like, Hey, do you think we could get this started? Cause my thought was if I could get the restaurants to do it and get people to take pictures, then at least it would keep them relevant during this time. Oh, that's um, a great idea. But that never really took off. I didn't try very hard, um, but this kind of took <laughs> off on its own. So it's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So if somebody at their house today wanted to make a rainbow, how would you suggest that they do that? What's the, what do you, what do you think is the best medium chalk? Paint? Um, there's yeah. Chalk. We did it on our house so that when it, we have a brick house though. So when it rains, it doesn't wash off cause we have a porch. Oh, that's cool. Um, so it's been there until my husband pressure washed. Um, <laughs> we've seen people put it in, use like paint on their windows. Mm -hmm. We've seen people do, um, really ornate stuff with chalk. Um, just taking a paper and drawing a, rainbow on it and putting it in the window. Mm -hmm. um, it's really however you guys want it. Like it, you could come up really creative, put streamers in the bushes. Make you make, make it really fun. That's so That's fun. awesome. Well, Katie, you have a question? I was just going to say, it's just really nice during this time when we, we have a almost 22 month old and it's just fun. We can't go to parks. There's not a whole lot of stuff to do. So when we come across a rainbow, it's just really fun to, to see it and to talk about the colors and, we can, we're just making it really interesting. <laughs> Allison said, yeah, it hey, makes hey. walks a little less boring. <laughs> it does. Yeah. We've, we've seen it all over. So we, we appreciate yeah. it. Very cool. Well, Katie, thank you okay. so much. Um, everybody, if you want to check out the page, it's the North Georgia COVID-19 rainbow hunt group on Facebook. Go check it out, join, make your own rainbows and, and share them. Katie, thank you so much for stopping. Thanks for by. having me. Really appreciate it. No problem. Bye. All right, well, we're going to keep this rolling. Whitney, you want to take our next guest? All right, so our next guest is our good friend, Whitney Marks. Um, she's the author of a local blog called Back to Basics, where she focuses on recipes that get back to basics and, and real food. So welcome, Whitney. Hey, everybody. What are you going to make for us today? So today I'm making a super simple eight-ingredient banana bread that I'm going to show you how to do at home if you would like to do the same. Well, and that's what I need. I need simple and I need gluten-free. Well, we've got it. <laughs> All right. So um, why, why do you make food that you call real food? Like how is your food real food? What does that mean? So to you? The ingredients that we're going to go over today and that I'll kind of talk through, they're all just very simple ingredients. So, for example, if you were to go to the store and buy banana bread, you're going to find preservatives and chemicals, some things on the ingredient label you might not know, some additives and things like that. So this is all just very plain, very basic. You don't have to wonder, you know, what's in it. Um, and so that's what I, I really like. Very cool. All right. Well, show us how to make it. Okay. So I'm just going to walk you through. Again, this is eight ingredients. It's gluten-free. The version I'm going to show you today does not have dairy, so if you shy away from dairy, have a, you know, a lactose intolerance, uh, this would work for you. It's also super easy and kid-friendly, so if you want to, you know, make memories with your kids during this time, this is a great recipe to get them involved with as well. And what you're going to start out with is four bananas that you mash, and so I've gone ahead and I've already mashed those. Uh, you can do that with a fork, with a potato masher, or even if you want to get your kids involved in the sensory activity, you can actually match the bananas with your hands. Uh, you also want your bananas to be super ripe. So let's say you go into the store and you fall a bunch of bananas. 
and you got to be left over and, you know, they're getting to the point where you might need to throw them out because they're perfect for banana bread. And the bananas for this recipe are the only thing that sweetens this. And so we don't have any other sugars. So the riper your bananas are, the sweeter your bread is going to be. So that would be uh, tip number one I would have for you. And then everything else you just add into the bowl. So a lot of baking can be intimidating because typically you have to have dry ingredients that you mix in the bowl and wet ingredients that you mix in a separate bowl. And then you combine those together and it's very technical. But this recipe is super simple. You literally throw everything into the same bowl and mix it up. So uh, in addition to your four bananas, after you smash those, you just take four eggs. And those don't even have to be beaten or anything. And then I have a third cup of coconut oil. So this was solid at room camp, and then I just melted it on the stove. And if you, you know, don't care about dairy free or you love butter, you can absolutely substitute butter in place of the coconut oil. And then I've got a half, half of a cup of coconut flour. So this is what makes it gluten free. And that this is a super cheap recipe and a super cheap flour to make with. I picked this up at Kroger for just a few bucks. So um, literally the whole recipe costs less than five dollars to make. Then I've got a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon, a fourth of a teaspoon of sea salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of vanilla. And so those are your eight ingredients. So you'll stir all that together. And I do. I did get this recipe uh, from a blog called Primally Inspired. I really like a lot of her recipes. So this is not unique uh, to me or to Back to Basic. And this has been a, a family favorite of ours in, in my house for a really long time. I've made this recipe for years. And uh, so if any of you try this at home, feel free to come back and leave a comment and let me know what you thought about it. Okay. So we've got all of our ingredients mixed. And so at this point, you really could put it in the pan if you wanted your banana bread plain. What I really like to do is add in chocolate chips. And so if you have kiddos at home and, you know, you wanted to add in something else a little sweet, this is the third cup of chocolate chips. If you, you know, want banana nut bread, you could easily do a third cup of nut, or even if you wanted to do raisins instead. And for the chocolate chips, I really love this lily friend. Um, it's sweetened with stevia. So, again, stevia is an herb that's naturally sweet. So, you don't have to worry about adding sugar there. And then you're just going to kind of fold in your chocolate chips or, you know, if you, have, if you add anything. So, this is great, too, if you just want to customize your recipe. It's really fun. And then that's really all you do. I'm going to get my bread pan. And you just lightly grease this with your coconut oil or butter. And... I'm just going to pour it in the pan there. And then you would just bake this at 350 for about 45 minutes. And then you're done. So it really is as easy as that. And if we've got time, I'll be glad to take some questions if anybody has any questions. We did have a question. Let's see. Looks like so, somebody's asking if you can use oat flour. That's really a great question. So I would stick to the coconut flour for this specific recipe. Gluten-free flours aren't traditionally easily interchangeable. And so I would I would definitely stick with coconut flour for this specific brand recipe. But that's a great question. All right. Well, do you have any that's questions, awesome. Whitney? No, I don't think so. I can say I have tried to substitute um, in recipes that call for coconut flour and substitute for other flours and it never it never turns out right so thank you um, yeah, it looks really good I'm excited I think I would add more chocolate chips though it's my only <laughs> my only addition yeah can you add more chocolate chips is that okay absolutely yeah <laughs> I mean you can have equal amount of chocolate chips and bananas if you want it okay awesome oh no I do have one more question so I do have some bananas that are in the freezer and I don't know how overripe is too ripe. Like they, after you put them in the freezer, they kind of turn completely black. Like, is that too, is that too overripe or can I still use those for banana bread? So I haven't actually, you mean like if you thawed them from frozen and then used them for uh -huh, the recipe? Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
I would think that you can do that. Honestly, you could get to the point with your bananas to where you think that they're rotten, where I mean, you, the whole thing could be black. And then if you throw them in the freezer and then wanted to thaw them out to you for this, yes, that's perfect for banana bread. So yeah, I would say you should be good to go with that. All right, awesome. Awesome. Well, Whitney, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us and, and teaching us how to make this banana bread. Uh, we're excited to try it. Actually, we're excited to try one of those loaves. So. <laughs> oh, and I do have a real quick, I do have a finished version that I forgot to show y'all. So I baked one ahead of time. And so this is going to be a dense bread with the coconut flour. So it's going to be a, more dense and heavy than, you know, a traditional bread might be. But you can easily this for a snack or to go with breakfast. So just a little side note there. Awesome. It looks delicious. Well, thank you so much, Whitney. We really appreciate you stopping by, and we will talk Thanks, to you later. Bye. Okay. All right, so our next guest is my friend Fabiola. She's an educator with Dalton Public Schools. Hi, Fabiola. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing well. So my question is, um, how did your classroom normally look and how has that changed now that you're having to teach from home? Uh, well, it's changed a lot, as you can imagine. Um, in the classroom, and I think most teachers are this way, you kind of set up a vibe in your room. So you know, I, I try to play with furniture and different seating options and lamps and music for the kids. Um, and you know all that's to set the tone so it's kind of hard not being able to control the learning environment that the kids are in now it's you know it's this space and then whatever's going on around them is is their new learning environment hmm. all right so how have you um yourself how difficult has it been or how have you been able to balance you're educating your own three kids at home and then you're also mm -hmm. teaching from home like how how has that work home life balance been for you um, it's been it's been interesting. I, I must say I've been very proud of my kids. They've taken it on pretty well. Um, we we tried to set up a schedule which sometimes goes better than others. Um, my older kids, I have two teenagers, so you know they're pretty easy going. Just whenever they get up, they log in. But I have a pre K student who um, luckily they have a lot set up online for her too. So we try to work side by side as much as possible. So she's working with mommy. Um, but then, you know, there are times that I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to lock the door and have a meeting. So, um, it's been very interesting, but fun at the same time, because I don't normally get to see my kids this much. So, um, I have enjoyed this kind of extra time with them. Oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah. You're probably here, um, our 22 month old, he's yeah. currently talking. So work home life balance, you know, it can be yes. interesting. Um, so my, my last question is, um, I used to teach and I know that a 20 minute or a 15 minute lesson with a small group um, or even with your own child, that is just so impactful and even more impactful than um, a, a parent might think. But what are some ways that parents can incorporate some really, really authentic learning that's unique to this time? Um, like in our classroom, we might not be able to have a garden at home. Um, we might not be able to take all of our kids on a hike. What are some things that teachers and I mean that parents can do during this time to really have some good authentic learning outside of the computer. I think um, and to me that's been almost like a positive that's come out of all of this is there have been some unique ways for kids to learn and for parents to help them. Um, you know things like you said that we can't always offer in the school setting. Um, you know, what we've done a lot at home is things like cooking. Um, you know, there's a lot of learning opportunities there. Older kids can read when they're reading a recipe. They can practice measurement. Little kids can identify numbers. Um, and so I, I would like to say to parents that don't feel like you have to, like, sit down and, and, and drill your kids things or to become, you know, automatically a third grade teacher out of nowhere. Um, there's a lot of things. Um, reading always reading. Um, you know, there's not, there's so much data out there that just reading to your kids or having your kids read to you, um, have them talk about the books to you, um, even watching a movie and talking about the characters in the movie, all of those things 
is them practicing those skills that we've taught them throughout the year. So, um, and then they don't feel like work. So they don't feel like, you know, they're, you're forcing them to do something that they don't want to be doing. Very cool. Um, do you have any additional advice to help? I know a lot of parents and even our community, they're a little bit worried about the summer slide. It's already mm -hmm. so massive oftentimes, but how can we, um, other than reading, obviously, how, what are some other ways that we can get our kids uh, back on grade level by the time that they re-enter school in the fall? Um, yeah, you know, that's definitely something I think teachers are concerned about that, you know, we, we always take into account the summer slide, but this is going to be very different. Um, we're all assuming that, um, like I said, reading and then those authentic experiences, um, any opportunity you have, you know, even if you're not sitting down working with them for 30 minutes, um, any chance you have to ask about, you know, an addition problem or a multiplication problem just out of nowhere to keep them on their toes with it. Um, Many teachers have um, online programs, you know, for whatever their school specific that will go on through the summer. So maybe ask your teachers, you know, do you have logins or do they will they still have access to this website over the summer? And a lot of them are kind of game based, you know, so they're they're fun for the kids. Um, so I would definitely before the end of the school year, ask your teachers what websites do they have? will their children have access to over the summer? Because even 20 minutes a day of just a little bit of work um, will kind of keep everything fresh in their minds. That's awesome. Actually, I remember reading a study whenever I was teaching and whenever I was um, working at a nonprofit where if they're just reading just one or two books a week, it really keeps their their reading level on track to where they, where they were before they um, left for the summer. So that that's awesome. I, I think that that's really great advice for us. So thank you. Oh, you have some sweet comments. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Just read all summer. I mean, that there was so much benefit in that. So absolutely keep your kids reading and it will help them a lot. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Teacher, you're awesome. I really appreciate what you do. All right. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a treat. Bye. All right. So there's many of you watching and maybe you want to do something. You want to help. You want to volunteer. You want to do something. You want to make a difference, uh, but you don't know where to start. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe you're just looking for some way to get involved. Well, our next guest uh, is Lydia Expedia and she works for Blood Assurance here in Dalton. And we're going to bring her on. Lydia, hey, how's it going? I'm good. How are y'all? We're doing good. Thank you for uh, participating in our live stream event here. Yeah, no a lot to us. Um, I guess we'll just ask you a couple of questions, and you can you can uh, let us let us know the answer. So, how has the the COVID crisis uh, impacted blood donations? So, because of the corona that is impacting everything, all of our um, manufacturing facilities, the schools, the retail centers that we would normally have blood drives at have canceled because they don't want us there. They don't want that exposure, which is understandable. We don't, you know, we don't want that exposure either. And this time of year, we rely very heavily on our high school donors to meet the need of the local patients. So it's really impacted us in the amount of donations we're receiving. In our centers, we've been still pretty steady. We haven't really seen a, a true decline yet. And hopefully we don't. But our drives have seriously been impacted, unfortunately, by this. Um, last week, our local hospital actually used the same amount of blood as the at the that they did at the same time last year. So the need for blood has not declined, even though our collection has declined because of losing those drives. So we definitely do still need the donors right now. Our immediate need is for O positive and any Rh negative blood. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that kind of corresponds to my next question. So who should be donating right now and why is it so important to donate? right? So, now? so who should be donating? Definitely O positive donors. Um, if you don't know your blood type, come in, donate within a week. We can, you know, we'll either email you if you give us your email or you can call us back and we can tell you what your blood type is. And then any RH negative blood people. So the A negative, the O negative, the B negative, AB negative, all of them, we, we just, really need the O pause and RH negative blood right now. Um, as long as you feel healthy, um, the criteria is to be healthy, obviously. 
16 year olds can donate with a parental consent. You can donate at the age of 17 and up without a parental consent. We are doing appointment only right now, so you would need to call and make that appointment, set that appointment up to come in, and they're every 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, as long as you feel good, you can come in and you can donate, and we will gladly accept it. Okay, can you give us the, um, the address and the phone number that people would need to call? Do you know that off the top of your head? People yeah, need to call um, to. Yeah, you're good. So the address for the Dalton Blood Assurance is 785 Shugart Road, and we're Suite 5. We're actually right between the liquor store and the PS Nails. So, <laughs> so, and then there's Marco's Pizza down there in GameStop as well. If you know, so yeah, right there beside the well, close next to the Walmart, that little shop yeah. is inside Walmart. Yeah. Okay. And then what's the phone number to call and set up an appointment? So you can call it. Yeah. You can call us directly at 706-226-7735 and we can set it up for you. But you can also go online to bloodassurance.org and set an appointment up there as well. You can also okay. download our app. It's Blood Assurance Quick Screen. And you can go ahead and do the questions on the app before you get here. And we're asking everybody to do that before their appointment just because it it shortens the amount of time that you're here in the center. And we are trying to do the social distancing. We've upped our cleaning. We fog at night. So, I mean, we're taking a lot of precautions right now to be open during this pandemic. Very cool. Um, and obviously, with everything that's going on, probably a question, a big question people are going to ask is like, what are you guys doing to make sure that your employees are safe and comfortable as well as your donors that come in? are safe and comfortable when they come to donate? So all employees that are dealing with the public are wearing masks. I actually just took mine off to do the video with you guys. Um, and so we're wearing masks at all time. We are cleaning everything that the donors touch immediately after they come through. So if they sit down in a chair, as soon as they get up and they go into the room to do their interview and physical, we're wiping it down. When After they are in the interview and physical room, we're wiping that down. When they go out to the chair to actually have the football meet done, we're wiping that down. Literally everything they touch gets wiped down. The door to the, the front door, the door to the refreshment area, like all of that gets wiped down after they've touched it. Um, we fog think once a week and we have a cleaning crew coming in once a week to clean literally every inch of the center so that there's Very no cool. way that anything could be hidden anywhere. Awesome. Okay. It looks like we might have a couple of questions for you. Let's see. <laughs> um, can people donate if they have rheumatoid arthritis? Or I guess any autoimmune disease. It depends on the autoimmune disease. It also depends more so on the medication that they're taking. So they're welcome to call us and we can go over that with them or they can stop it and we can go over it in person with them to see if they'd be able to give that day or not. Okay. It looks like actually, like actually my mom asked a question. I think I know what she's trying to say. Uh, she actually did the antibody test and tested positive for the antibody test. Can people who have tested positive donate plasma? Donate or donate blood. blood or plasma. So they can donate blood still. However, right now we're, we are doing convalescent plasma, which is for the people that have tested positive for COVID, but there's requirements for that. And they can contact Sherry Lee um, in Chattanooga. And I will give the phone number out right now too for that. And she will um, go over it like step by step, what the process is, if they're eligible, ask them all the questions they need to know, set up the appointment, all of that. But we don't do the actual antibody testing here. We just collect the plasma from the people that have had it done. And right. her phone number is going to be um, 423-756-0966. And then you can do extension. I'm sorry. I should. I didn't think about having this ready. No, you're fine. We didn't have that in your questions. Uh, obviously, it was one that popped up on the, the messages yeah. there. So. No worries. Um, well, they can just ask for Sherry Lee. I can't find her extension, but just ask for Sherry Lee when you call the 423 I'm sorry. Awesome. Well, that's that, that's been some really cool information. I think, uh, I think what you guys are doing is awesome, and hopefully we'll inspire some people to get out there and donate some blood. So thank you so much for, for hanging out with us for a few minutes, and we really appreciate it. Thanks hope, you have a, hope you have a wonderful evening. 
You too. All right, see you later. All right, so that brings us to our last guest of the evening. Uh, my friend Ben Honeycutt is with us, and we're going to go ahead and bring him on. Ben, what's up, man? How are you? What up? I'm good. K Woods, how you guys doing? We're doing good. Doing well. So for those of you who don't know who Ben is, Ben is a singer-songwriter uh, who just so happened to, at the beginning of the year, packed his family up in an RV, uh, sold all, <laughs> sold their house, sold a bunch of their belongings, and are living in an RV full-time or a motorhome full-time now. Uh, ben, you want to tell us a little bit about your RV experience? Yeah, I don't, I don't know about fancy, Whitney, but <clears throat> yeah, first year we started, uh, like Brandon said, we sold uh, most everything we had and hit the road, and we were just starting to get good at it when we kind of had to stop. So right now we're kind of holed up at uh, my in-law's house in Alabama until we're more free to move about the plane again. But uh, no, it's been a really cool experience. Uh, difficult at times, awesome at times, you know, the, the whole thing. But when you when you pack your family in, we've got three kids, eight, or actually now nine, almost seven, and two. Um, it gets kind of close in a 300 square foot uh, house. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. Very cool. Well, talking earlier about people getting creative and and uh, finding ways to bring a smile to people's face and you know make people laugh. Uh, you've started this whole little, I might say it wrong, but lyrical content in the comments little series that you're doing. So you want to tell everybody about that and how that's going to be one of the songs or the song that you sing for us today? Yeah, yeah. You said it exactly right. So good job. No, Perfect. but uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I just had this idea. So since we've been kind of in one spot. I've just had a little more uh, extra time on my hands. So I had this idea. I've been writing some, but what's a way to get people that are also, that also have extra time on their hands to get involved uh, in content on social media and that kind of thing. So I just had this idea to throw out a topic, have people make comments, and then just I write a song or I just put their comments as the lyrics and make a complete song strictly out of the comments in the comment section. So I've done three so far. One just about... Quarantine life, one about Walmart shopping. That's a good one, so you can go back and check that one. And the one I'm going to do in just a minute is uh, one called Just What We're Looking Forward To. So I, it's called Feeling of Freedom, but uh, it's just what we're all looking forward to when we are free to uh, leave quarantine again. Very cool. Um, I think we are going to let you get set up. And while we do that, um, let's see, while we do that, we are going to hear a word from our sponsor for this video, which is the Cowan Law Firm. These guys are awesome. They're great guys, a great bunch of lawyers. If you happen to find yourself in need of a personal injury lawyer or divorce, uh, lawyer. divorce, law, divorce lawyer, definitely, uh, definitely hit those guys up. So with that being said, let me see if I can make this switch. Should have called them whenever you cut my hair today. And then after this, we'll get right into Ben playing. With the COVID-19 pandemic and people losing their jobs, coupled with the recent storms that have ravaged our area, it's natural to feel a little hopeless and a little scared about what the future holds. We want you to know that you're not alone. It's more important than ever for us to band together as a community. Reach out to a neighbor or loved one. Embrace this unique time to make lasting memories with your family. Remember, we're all in this together. We look forward to the day that we can break bread together worship together and just gather together as a community better days are on the horizon and until that day comes we're here to answer any questions you may have and to continue to serve you in our community i miss wearing pants i miss my girlfriend just want to hug mom and dad again when this is all over with getting my toes deep can't wait to feel american again that feeling of freedom brown fires and smokes that feeling of freedom a trip to the store i can't wait to go shopping again Cause I can't show my hate, my blow Other humans exist That feeling of freedom, freedom 
leave the house behind tacos in my life chinese buffet where you at my friend play dates and movie nights but sure I'll be nice after a long day working for the man that feeling of freedom somewhere on the beach that feeling of freedom that quarantine 15 maybe i'll relax get back with a drink in my hand take a breath visit family and friends that feeling of freedom freedom can't wait to get my baby sick He's like the neighborhood man. If mullets were in style, I'd just rename him Kyle. That feeling of freedom gets back to school. That feeling of freedom, jury duty with you. Cashing in my stimulus check. At Walmart and bars, spending all my money on things I don't need. That feeling of freedom, freedom indeed. That feeling of freedom, freedom indeed. That was awesome. So good. <laughs> thank you for the clap. Everyone, thank actually, you actually, I had to watch it on Facebook because we can't actually hear it when we were doing it. But we watched it. It looked really good. Oh, yeah, thank you. It great. <laughs> uh, well, we had a surprise planned, but it looks like only one person showed up. <laughs> Uh, but we're going to bring him on anyways. Rob, what's up? <laughs> no, we can't hear you. Let's see. Unmute your mic, Rob. There you are. I am, yeah, I'm good. How are you guys? Good, good. Oh, your eyes are like blue. <laughs> <laughs> Danny and Amber, so Danny and Amber are to log on to Ben. Oh, that's a cool shirt. <laughs> Yeah, so they were all going to log on. It was the first time we've all been on a video together. Um, but I guess it didn't happen. So it's, it's the first time that me, you, and Rob have been on a video together since when you're in detail. And so, it's, a good, it's a good moment. And it's a good thing. I mean, Rob, Rob, the fact that you're here, uh, I just want to thank you personally for, you know, the way you've been keeping everybody updated and and taking time to post your, your little live videos and stuff. Those have been very informative and, and – uh, we salute you, Mr. Bradham. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. It's been my pleasure. And, you know, this has been a difficult time for everyone, but, um, you know, we'll get through it. And appreciate everything you've done, Brandon. And, and Ben, your music is amazing. Um, it, I've, I've followed you on Facebook as you've, as you've done your tour with your family, and uh, you've been very uplifting. So, Thank you for what you're doing, Ben. And very cool. Well, I think that's gonna, you know, wrap up the live, the live broadcast here. And uh, so this, like I said, this would be a plan. Rob, Danny, Amber, Ben, and me, and we're gonna tie it all together in this big like hoorah! And what better way to? To, to highlight Dalton, how cool it is by playing when you're in D-Town. So we're going to end with that. Once again, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Rob, thanks for stopping by, Ben. You're awesome. Thank you for, for participating. Uh, if you enjoyed this live broadcast, let us know. Maybe we'll do some more of these in the future. Who knows? I mean, I hope that we can get out there and do the real vlog soon. Um, I, I know the, our kitchen isn't the most interesting thing to look at when we do these. But, uh, yeah. If, uh, if you enjoyed it and would like to see more, maybe we can do it periodically. So that being said, thank you guys so much, and uh, we'll see you next time on the 706.
thanks for stopping by today, guys. What can I help you all with? My wife and I are strongly considering moving here to Dalton. I visited here for the past couple of years for work purposes, and I think it's amazing. My wife, on the other hand, needs a little more convincing. Now, don't get me wrong. You have a beautiful community. I love the location, the small town vibe. So I guess I'm trying to figure out what there is to do in Dalton and how we can get involved here. You know, I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. Say no more. We're in the 706 up in North GA, where hot hands do sponge and rugs are made. No doubt we've got something for ya, living in the city of Dalton, Georgia. We got a couple spots to buy the staples, FaceTime with Bob Shaw and Marla Maples. Eat some donuts while you run the loop, hit the Bradley and shoot some hoops. There's the Miracle League at AMC, the skating rink will always be peaches to me. Check out the view while you're on a hike, cheer for your team on a Friday night. Peacocks on the street, bird park in the middle You may not find the parking spot you like You can walk the sidewalks but don't ride your bike Ain't no telling where the night's gonna start Restaurants, retail, wine and art And all the taps downtown, they be filling them up Then we hit the streets with our own wood cup Out here in Whitfield, we're so pretty Nothing but love for the car Let's take a walk down Morris Street, Latin culture and things to eat. Talk to Julio, see what's up. Try our cha cha and corner the cup and I love the Esperanto. Tacos, tacos, we got tacos. Yeah, man, we hit the lotto. Soft shell, crunchy corn tortillas. Food trucks, eat taquerias. Pollo, carnitas, carne hey, asada. Tastes so good, it's a flavor drama. Queso, salsa, guacamole. So many tacos, holy moly. Really? I don't know what you're talking about. So what do you think? Okay, I'm completely sold. Thank you so much for your time. You'll be hearing from us very soon. Great. And that's how it's going down.
Hey, <laughs> hey, Danny, what's up? <laughs> hold on, hold, give me just a second. I can't hear you. How about now? There you are. There you are. Well, I saw you sitting in there. I thought I might as well bring him on real quick since he he logged in. Ben's already gone. Gotcha. I missed you, but Danny, I do want to ask you how how often do you get referred to as the taco guy? Uh, quite frequently, actually. Yeah. Let's say. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad that we could collaborate and create a persona for you to live out in Dalton from here through eternity. So <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I appreciate you, uh, you guys, uh, confining in me. <laughs> no problem, man. Well, thanks for stopping by. Uh, and, uh, I guess have a good one. I know you're about to go do some volunteering. So thank you for doing that. You're an awesome man, Danny. You rock. And, uh, we'll see you next time. Sweet. Appreciate it. Brothers. See you guys. Bye.